In this video, we're going to look at the last example of section 2.9 on applied optimization. So this is example six. As a reminder, please work out the solution on your own first. Give yourself at least 10, 15 minutes to tackle this problem and sit with it a little bit. And then when you're ready, continue watching the video. So for this problem, we're told that the cost in dollars to produce Q gift baskets is given by the function C of Q. What we wanna do is find the quantity where the average cost is minimized. So similar to the previous problems, our first goal is to find that average cost function. And here we wanna find the quantity that minimizes this average cost. So we want our average cost to be a function of Q, the quantity. So we saw in our course a couple weeks ago that average cost is just total cost divided by the number of items made. And that makes sense taking an average. It's like, okay, well, how much do we spend in total? Divide by how many things we made gives us the price per how many things we made or the price per thing that we're making. So that would be cost C of Q over Q. So here in this problem, we're given explicitly what C of Q is. So we can just fill that in here. So we have 160 plus 2Q plus 0.1Q squared all over Q. So now to clean this up a little bit, we can divide each of these terms in the numerator by Q. That'll just help to simplify our Q in the denominator. So from there, we'll get 160 over Q plus these Qs in the next term, and the second term cancel out. So plus two plus in the final term, Qs cancel one Q in the numerator, cancels with the Q in the denominator. So we get plus 0 0.1 Q. So just to maybe write it all compactly, we get 160 over Q plus two plus 0 0.1 Q. So now our, our job is to find that quantity where this cost, average cost, is minimized. So that means, as we've seen before, we need to find the derivative. A, and maybe I'll leave it with AC, average cost. So we'll clean that up a little bit, average cost. So we need to find average cost, the derivative at AC prime. So here we can take the derivative of each term. Uh, just to recall, if we have 160 over Q, that's like saying 160 times Q to the negative one. So when we take the derivative, negative one comes down. So we get negative 160. Then we have a minus one more in the uh, exponent. So we'd have over Q squared now. Plus derivative two is just zero. Plus the derivative of 0.1 Q would just be 0.1 using that power rule again. So now in order to find the critical values, we need to find where our derivative is either not defined or is zero. So we see that AC prime doesn't exist at Q equals zero. So that's gonna be one of our test points here. And AC prime of Q is equal to zero where? Well, it's equal to zero when change color here, when zero is equal to negative 60 over Q squared plus 0 0.1. So let's go ahead and solve for Q there. Solving for Q, we can move this term over to the left-hand side. So the negative becomes positive. So we get 160 over Q squared equals 0 0.1. So now we can multiply both sides by Q squared to get it out of the denominator, and then divide both sides by 0.1 point one, there we go, um, to cancel out that point one. So that means that we're getting 160 over 0 0.1 equals Q squared. And so now we need the square root of both sides. So we can consult our calculator here. So I'm gonna get a new line and I want square root of, I'm gonna use a lot of parentheses, 160 divided by 0.1 and enter. So we are getting 40. 
So going back to my notes, this means that 40 is equal to Q. And now I would have negative 40 as well being one of my potential critical points or being one of my critical points, one of my potential minimums, but we wouldn't have negative number of items being made. So we can just ignore that one. So now we want to determine which, if any, of these critical values is indeed a minimum. So we need to test Q equals zero and Q equals 40. So to do that, we consult our second derivative. So we're going to compute AC double prime of Q. So taking that derivative of our derivative, using that power rule by converting Q to the negative or Q one over Q squared to, or converting this to Q to the negative two. So that would look like negative 160 times Q negative two. So taking the derivative there would get us negative 160 times negative two all over Q cubed. And then the derivative of 0.1 is just 0.1. No, it's not, it's zero. Good catch everyone. <laughs> so just multiplying that out, AC double prime of Q is equal to 160 times two is going to be 320. And we now are positive because we have two negatives over Q cubed. So now let's test our values here. So A, C double prime of zero. Well, that's undefined. We can't have a negative or a zero in the denominator. What about AC double prime of 40? Well, here we get 3320 over 40 cubed. I don't even have to compute this to know that this value is positive because we have positive in the numerator and denominator. So a positive second derivative means that our function is concave up at that point, which means we have a min or a max here. Means we have a min. So in fact, when Q is 40, our average cost is minimized. So let's summarize together. So this means, so Q equals 40 minimizes, if I can spell minimizes, right? Minimizes average cost. So then if we want to write our answer in a complete sentence, we can say making Q equals 40 ribbon bobs or winders or whatever we have. Let's look at our problem here. And we're actually making gift baskets in this problem. The other one was ribbon bobbers. So when making Q equals 40 gift baskets, we will minimize our average cost. Excellent. And there we go. All right. Thank you for watching, everyone. Great work.